sermon, a very important sermon, a sermon that you may not have heard the way that you will hear it this morning as God speaks to us. But allow me a few moments to give some background. Uh, it might give some depth to the meaning of this scripture lesson. First of all, Luke is writing to a non-Jewish audience, to the Gentiles, to those who were from other countries, other cultures, and Luke is inviting them to get to know this Jesus. He tells the stories of Jesus and invites them into a Christian community of faith. The lesson happens very early in the Gospel of Luke. What has taken place is the birth of Jesus, his dedication. There is an incident as a young boy that he's in the temple, and then a number of years are skipped. Jesus is baptized in the Jordan at the age of 30 by his cousin, John the Baptist. And immediately following that, the heavens open up, and God declares that this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Holy Spirit then takes Jesus into the wilderness, and there Jesus is tempted by Satan in three different ways. But Jesus does not succumb to the temptations of the devil, and thus Jesus is prepared to begin his ministry. Now, logic might suggest that Jerusalem would be the place where Jesus would begin his ministry, after all, Jerusalem is the city of God. The temple is there. The temple courtyard would be the perfect place for Jesus to go to preach and to teach those who would follow him. But Jesus chooses not to go to Jerusalem. Instead, he goes into a Gentile world. He returns home to Nazareth in Galilee. Now, Josephus the historian of antiquity says that Galilee is the region that surrounds the Sea of Galilee. We're familiar with that, north of Jerusalem, a day's ride. It's about 50 miles from north to south and 25 miles from east to west. And crossroads pass through Galilee that lead to the sea, that lead to the far east, lead south into Egypt. And so Galilee holds a very diverse population. Josephus also says there's 204 towns, cities, and villages in Galilee, and they comprise a population of over 3 million people. We don't think about Galilee in that way, do we? It was heavily populated, many cultures, a lot of diversity. It was a liberal area where people were open to new thought, to new ways of doing things. They wanted to see a new light, a better way to live their lives. And so it was the perfect place for Jesus to go to begin a very radical ministry. A Jewish law stated that for every 10 Jewish families, a synagogue was to be established. And there was a substantial Jewish population in Galilee. The way that it worked was these 10 families came together and they formed a synagogue, a house church, and one of the members of the synagogue was charged to be what we would consider to be a business manager. And this business manager had two major functions. The first was to provide care for the members of the synagogue, food, shelter, clothing. And if there was an abundance, if there was a surplus of any of those items, he would share those items with people in other synagogues that had need. The second major function of the business manager was to arrange for worship. And worship in synagogues happened, it included three elements. First element was prayer. On the Sabbath, Saturday for the Jews, they came together, the families came together for a time of prayer. And following this time of prayer, there would be the reading of the Holy Scriptures. It might be from the scroll of the Torah, what we would consider the first five books of the Bible, or it might be the reading of a scroll of one of the prophets. Following the readings, someone would be invited, a male, to interpret the words that had been spoken and facilitate conversation, discussion about the text. 
Now, this was a perfect entry level for Jesus to begin his ministry because business managers would often go outside of the synagogue and invite people in to do both the reading and to expound on the words that were shared. This was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. I share with you a reading from the Gospel of Luke in the fourth chapter, and I'll begin with the 16th verse. Hear the word of God. Now when Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When Jesus had finished, he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. Now it's important to note here that when someone is seated following the reading of the scriptures, it is from a seated position that they go on to interpret the words. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon Jesus. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine in the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up and drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him, Jesus, off of the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. These are the words of our Lord for all who wish to follow. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God of gifts, God of giving, we praise you that you have not blessed just one person or one family or even one nation, but have granted gifts to all of your people. It is when we are one in your spirit, one dedicated to your reign, that we become your body on earth. Bring us to life, a real and true life, as we begin to recognize and celebrate the ties that bind us together. These things we pray, ever trusting in you. Amen. Jesus' first sermon. Did you hear it? I was invited to a retreat a number of years ago now when we were living in New England was held over in Vermont, got up early that morning and traveled over to the site, went in, registered, and got my complimentary coffee and donut, stood around waiting for people to show up. They came in, I realized that uh, I was a stranger in their company, didn't know anyone that was there. More and more came, and finally the facilitator came out and invited us into a larger room where there were tables and asked us to sit down, and 
once we were seated and had a word of prayer, we were given this exercise 